Hi, welcome to Better Presentations. I'm Buck Moore and I run an AV consulting service where I set up and operate AV systems for live events. I examine AV quotes and budgets and I help presenters and meeting planners with business presentations. I'll do everything from setting up multimedia playback to editing slideshows to rebuilding entire presentations so an audience can see and hear what's going on in the room. I've done this in many places including Toronto, Kleinberg, Chicago, San Diego, Washington, Las Vegas, New York, all over the place really, and helping presenters from countries all over the world as well. I've now personally assisted with over 3,000 business presentations and set up AV systems for over 3,200 different events, so I've seen a lot of people on stage. Not only that, I have delivered well over 1,000 speeches and presentations and have been in front of many audiences as either presenter or performer. I've been a stage performer for over 20 years and I'm still not crazy. So in short, live events are my specialty. So let's get on with the slideshow. Keeping things readable. Take a look at this slide right here. One of the most common problems with projecting images has to do with readability. If people can't read your slides, why project them? Why not just photocopy a bunch of handouts and go from there? You see, part of the problem arises when an author of the presentation creates it on a plane, a train, or in an office late at night. The computer screen is right there and everything is pretty readable. But when you blow that image up, it doesn't look the same. Keep in mind that computer screens are very bright, and as I've said, they're usually right in front of you. Sometimes, with a group of a hundred or more, it's very difficult for people at the back of the room to see small text or fancy text for that matter. So, when creating a slide, just pick a block style text like Arial Black or Courier Bold or Times New Roman if you can stand to look at that one anymore. <laughs> but don't get too fancy with too bold a text. Bold can be very hard to visually separate. Something many people don't realize is that all projectors are different and ambient lighting conditions can vary like crazy. I remember in this one particular venue it was a bright winter day with a very dull projector, something like 600 or 900 lumens, not very much by today's standards. Anyway, people had to squint just to make anything out. The place had no curtains, it was just terrible. However, those presentations which had bold text on bright straightforward backgrounds were pretty much readable by the whole audience. All right, take a look at this next slide, Keeping Things Readable, Part 2. Take a look at this slide. Speaking of font color, if you can hook this slideshow up to a projector, do it. You'll see that these colors just do not work together. If the master template is a fancy background color, you'll most likely have to simply change the font color to contrast it, or again, it'll be hard to read. Okay, next slide, just the facts. The information contained on this slide, as you can see, tends to look more like a pattern than an informative slide. The key here is to clean up this boring pattern of a slide by getting rid of text you don't need and throw in some bullet points to streamline it. And while you're at it, change the color of the font. Nothing too fancy here, just make it so it's a lot easier for an audience to follow. If anything, this next slide serves as a great handout, similar to a sidebar in a magazine article. It just has a summary of facts for today's multitasking, short attention span audience. You don't want people to read the slides while you're trying to talk because it's very distracting. But if people can catch a quick bullet point or, or even an image, images are generally better for presentations and speeches, but we'll get to images later. All right, moving on. Practice your talk. Is it practice enough that you don't have to read what's in front of you, or worse, read from what's being projected? People in the audience are already reading the screen and possibly a printout, so for you to read what they are already reading makes you look unprofessional. There's nothing that says you have to be a professional speaker to make an impact. In fact, the opposite is often true, but practice does really make perfect. I can't even change that expression. It's just too perfect. Microphone technique. Learn how to use a microphone. We call it microphone technique in the business. Professional singers know how to use a microphone without having to know the physics of the device. Let the AV person worry about how the thing works, but you should learn how to use a microphone to reinforce your voice. Using a microphone correctly not only makes you look professional, but your audience will be happier because they can hear everything you have to say, and they won't miss any words in between. There's a good measurement in AV called the Articulation Index, pretty fancy term, but it gives the technician a good idea of what will be understood by an audience through a speaker system. The Articulation Index, as it's called, increases when a speaker talks directly into the microphone. Enunciation obviously helps as well. In a few weeks, my entire Better Presentations package will be available for either download or in a hard copy, including data files, a video file, MP3 of the video soundtrack, and other useful information. Not only that, it'll be very reasonably priced.